Neighbor from hell tries to steal our house, faces karma when her own actions get her slapped with $200,000 bill. Before we get started let's introduce the main characters. Entitled neighbor will be called N going forward and spoiled son of the entitled neighbor will be S for entitled son. There will also be the previous owner of our house who will be called P.O. though they have a limited part in this story. Also keep in mind while reading this story that from the time that we bought the house to current day was almost 15 years. So unless otherwise stated you can assume that there was a pretty big gap between most events that took place. Let's get started. In order to properly build up to the climax and set the stage for the events that took place first I have to give a little background. Most of this happened before we bought and moved into this house. So I owned a very large chunk of property which was down the road from a popular recreational lake in our area. I say down the road but it's actually a pretty fair distance away. Even though, the road that N lives on is the only road leading to multiple lakefront properties and resorts, along with the most popular boat dock on this side of the lake. So the properties here aren't extremely valuable that normal people can't afford them but there are some extremely valuable properties down the road with very rich people driving by all the time. This will be relevant later in the story. Karen being quite wealthy and owning a very large chunk of property ended up splitting her property off into four roughly equal sections when her children came of age. One she gave to her daughter, who somehow is pretty decent person, considering the rest of her family. Then another section she gave to S. She built houses for them on both of the properties roughly to her children's specifications, then on the fourth bit of property, the one that did not have her own house on it, she built a small convenience store, this will also be relevant later on. Now I'm not sure why, probably to avoid possible future disputes or something, she actually ended up giving the deeds to her children for their respective houses and properties. You can probably tell where this is going. Well while respectable daughter was pretty respectable. S or perhaps I should change it to irresponsible son, was a party maniac. Everyone in the neighborhood at the time absolutely hated him. He would throw loud obnoxious late night parties almost every single night and keep people awake. The police apparently had someone stationed nearby because they were called on him so often. It probably didn't help his entitlement that mommy paid all of the bills for him, she kept everything in her name. Water, electric, garbage, everything, they all went to her mailbox. Well all except for one that is. Since the property was in his name so was the property tax, which he never gave to Anne and instead just ignored. I guess Anne either just didn't think about it or assumed that he was paying it himself. Either way, it didn't come as a surprise when the police showed up at his house. But it did when he did not come back and the house went up for auction. At this point the house was in shambles. Holes in the drywall and even the living room floor had a huge hole leading down into the garage slash basement. The kitchen floor and subfloor needed to be totally replaced, almost all of the walls were covered in mud basically his irresponsibility and party habits left the house in what the banks considered an unlivable condition. Because of that the only people who could afford it were those who could pay out of pocket for it. Enter P.O. P.O. was a house flipper, not one of the big wealthy ones that you see on TV, but more of a hobbyist than anything. He was retired and he flipped houses to keep him busy and active. P.O. would buy a house like this one super cheap on auction, fix it up himself then put it back on the market. While he fixed it up he would live off of the profit from the previous house and typically about the time he finished fixing one up and buying the next one his profit would have about run out. Any that he had left over just went into an emergency savings fund. Which he said wasn't anything special. Anyways we were in the market for a new place but couldn't afford anything super expensive on our budget, but when we saw this place on a website for sale it seemed perfect, it was the perfect size, and in the perfect neighborhood and even down the road from the lake, which we love fishing and boating so it was perfect in almost every way. Or AT at least it looked that way. We were scared of the price, which wasn't listed on the website yet. But it wouldn't hurt to AT at least have a look and see. We drove by to look at it and found P.O. working on it, we stopped in to say hi and ask the price. He explained that he was planning to fix it up and sell it and that his realtor just added it to the website's database to make it easier and more efficient when he was ready to actually sell it. Anyways we sat down and had a nice chat with him just being friendly and all and he appreciated the company. We explained that we would be willing to buy it from him for a reasonable price considering its current condition and the work he'd already put into it. He had it about half finished, we explained that we would love to finish it and live in it as a forever home. He turned us down explaining that he already had several offers for it and didn't feel right selling it to us and that we could buy I for the full price when he was finished. So we kindly thanked him and left our number asking him to call us if he ever changed his mind. Which he promised he would. Less than two weeks later we actually got an unexpected call from him. He explained that his sister had come down sick in another state and that he wanted to go and be with her and would not have enough time or patience to finish the house. He explained that the house was not up to code but if we could find a way to buy it then he'd be happy to sell it to us for a reasonable price. We happily agreed and ran our looking for banks. We had a few connections from a realtor friend of ours who actually helped us find a bank willing to loan the money to buy the house with a few conditions attached. Basically we would have two weeks to bring the house up to code otherwise they could default on the loan and auction it off. After explaining the situation to P.O. he offered to help as much as he could. 
He couldn't actually do any work to the house because he was in such a rush but he explained exactly what we needed to do to bring it up to code and meet the bare minimum requirements how much time and effort it would take and how much money it would cost. He even offered to help us out another way. We took out a loan for twice what he actually wanted for the house and he gave us back the other half. We used that money for repairs to the house. After the work he'd already put in the house was so close to meeting code that we could probably have done it ourselves, but just in case we called in a few friends and got it knocked out in half the time. After getting it up to code however there was still plenty of work that needed to be done and so we spent several months replacing flooring and subflooring, re ruing wires. Patching holes in the walls replacing old ugly literally decomposing wallpaper that was stuck directly to the drywall. You get the point. We put a ton of work into the place. Then it was finally time to move into our dream home, it still had a few issues that we would fix down the road as we went on. But it was finally time to move in. We weren't even finished moving in yet when Anne came over to introduce herself. As we were working things out with P.O. in the very limited time that we had, he had warned us over and over about Anne and her entitled attitude. At first Anne was extremely nice, and we had no idea why P.O. warned us about her so much. Then it happened. As we were wrapping up our conversation she explained to us in a very kind and compassionate way that our house actually belonged to her and that we had 30 days to get out, she said that she felt sorry for us since we were scammed so bad but that it was actually her house and the P.O. had no right to sell it to us at all. We'd heard horror stories about people being scammed like that before, so you could imagine our terror when she explained all of this to us. We were horrified that we had put in all of this time and effort and money into this dream house and now we were going to lose it just like that because we fell for some guy's scam. We thanked her for explaining it to us and being so nice and said that we would talk to the bank and P.O. and get it all figured out. So that's what we did, we talked to the bank who confirmed that P.O. was the actual owner of the deed, we spoke to the realtor who also testified the same thing. We spoke to P.O. who explained that they accused him of stealing the house multiple times after he bought it on auction and that he was harassed by her constantly over the house. Everyone that we spoke to had the exact same story. We even went up to the courthouse and confirmed that our name was on the deed. During this process is when we heard the backstory about S from several neighbors. N came by not long after this and asked us when she could expect us to be moved out. Which we explained would never happen as we legally own the property and it wasn't our fault that S lost the property. We apologized for the loss that she had and explained that we knew it was probably really hard to lose her family property like that because of her son's negligence but that was not our fault and we weren't just going to give her a property that we bought with our own hard-earned money and worked so hard to fix up. Then N realizing that we knew the situation decided to go into a long sob story about how this property had been in her family for generations and that she couldn't bear to lose it and how P.O. had stolen it from them when they were caught up in the confusion of their child being arrested. We asked why they didn't bid for the house and buy it back after he lost it. Considering that we bought it from P.O. for only about 50k and considering that he was still making a small profit on that even after all of the work and materials he'd put into it before selling it to us they could have easily bought it for next to nothing on auction and had it back. And explained that she felt the house and property were being stolen from them and that they refused to pay for something that rightfully belonged to them. We apologized once more but explained that there was no way we were going to take a loss on the property, especially after all of the time and effort that we put into it and the additional materials that we bought for it just to make her happy. However, we were sympathetic with her situation and offered to sell the house to her for a very reasonable price, 100k. Which considering its location and how fixed up it is, that was still just over half of its total market value. We after buying it from P.O. for 50k and putting an additional 30k into materials, plus several months of hard labor to fix it up, we felt that was a very reasonable price. We didn't say anything but we would even be willing to go down to 90k if she wanted to negotiate with us. She immediately counter-offered with 40k explaining that she shouldn't have to pay anything at all for something that rightfully belongs to her. When we said that was way too low she responded saying that she understood how much effort we put into it and that we had to buy a lot of materials to fix it up so she would be nice and throw in an extra 10k for all the stuff we did to the house. When we told her that 50k was what we bought the house for from P.O. she got upset and called us liars and thieves saying the house was a complete dump that that there was no way it was worth that much. Not only had she resorted to name calling at this point but going as far as to call our dream home a dump after all the blood and sweat and tears, not to mention dollars that we poured into it. We were done with her BS and kindly asked her to get out of our house explaining that she was no longer welcome here and that we would never sell our house to her even if she offered us double the marked value. She obviously got upset about this and threw all kinds of insults at us as she walked out the door. Later we found out that she was spreading all kinds of rumors about us throughout the neighborhood saying that we stole the house from her and all kinds of other stupid stuff. At first we ignored it thinking that no one would actually believe it, then a guy pulled into our driveway with a gun threatening us to get out now. We'd never met him before but we had heard of him. He apparently considered himself to be the peacekeeper of the neighborhood and confronted anyone who caused problems like this. Most of the people in our neighborhood actually liked him saying he was a pretty reasonable guy, and being a very rural neighborhood where plenty of, not so law-abiding citizens live most people greatly appreciated his presence. He actually did work hard to keep the neighborhood as peaceful as possible and did way more than the cops actually do, most of the time anyways. 
Just a note, Out neighborhood is split into two primary sections. One section is filled with mostly old retired people, it's very nice and peaceful, everyone gets along. The other is filled with the less law-abiding people further into the wilderness and away from prying eyes. We like at the edge of the peaceful part. Separated by about a mile or so of woodland and farmland, so hearing about him before and assuming based on descriptions that this was the same guy, we decided to test out that hypothesis. We told him that we had no idea what was going on and invited him in for a beer and chat. We allowed him to bring his gun but told him that we would be bringing our own as well. Almost everyone in my town has a gun. There are more gun stores than there are dollar stores if that says anything. So we weren't really worried about him having a gun with him that doesn't really mean much in our town, it's just a way of saying hey I'm capable of defending myself if this gets out of hand. Now if someone pointed it at you, which he didn't, then that would be a different story. Bit back to the main story. He agreed and after a few hours of chatting and explaining the situation he explained that he figured it was something like that and apologized for the misunderstanding. He explained that he got caught up in the rumors and flipped a switch and that it wouldn't happen again. He also thanked us for buying it explaining that when S moved out everyone was much happier, he didn't have to hear people complaining about loud music and drunk slash high teenagers stumbling down the middle of the road in the middle of the night and nearly getting run over. We all had a good laugh about it afterward and he left without saying another word. Now time for the reason that Mr. Peacekeeper believed the rumor so easily. This is a bit of a side story, but it's also a major turning point and when everything started to go downhill for N. I also want to add that the events of this side story do overlap a little bit with the events of the next part of the story. But let's get on to it. So I mentioned that N split off one-fourth of her property to build a convenience store. Well this store was extremely popular in the neighborhood. And being right in the middle basically it was in a perfect location. It wasn't popular for their prices, they actually overcharged for everything by quite a bit, and it wasn't popular for their customer service either, which included and was mostly limited to thank you for your purchase as you walked out the door. Sometimes. They would give you a refund though if you found mold on the food that you bought from them, so that was nice I guess. Anyways they were so popular because they were the only convenience store for miles. If you had to buy groceries and didn't want to drive all the way to town then they were just a skip and a hop away for most people. Heck we even put aside our differences and shop there on many occasions. I mean they were literally next door to us after all. But aside from that, the popularity of their small store allowed them to build up quite the reputation in our neighborhood. A very positive one. Everyone wanted to keep their convenient little store, and they would dare anyone to try and take it from them. I suppose I could kind of see the sentiment there. And that's back when everyone thought that Anne and her family were pretty good people. So when Anne started spreading rumors people tended to listen. The rumors about us stealing an entire house from her just blew over because everyone knew that was just ridiculous. But for the most part people still trusted her. But people did believe the other rumors and trust me there were plenty. But they were mostly small petty stuff that no one ever cared about. Let me just say that even assuming all of the rumors about us were true, there was much more that could be said about some other people in our neighborhood. So no one ever paid any attention to them. They did avoid us however, considering that Anne had obvious beef with us and no one wanted on her bad side in fear of being banned from her store, they all just ignored us and left us to our own devices. After a few years however S finally got out of prison and having nowhere left to go and allowed him to move back in. She didn't like the idea of him living with mommy so she rented him an apartment above her convenience store and she absolutely forbid any wild parties on her property ever again. He didn't actually have to pay rent though. All he had to do was run the store for them when they were busy with other things, which wasn't even all that often. However, even after all of this stuff happened and still did not learn his lesson obviously. While he was running the register he would often double charge for items and pocket the extra money. We found this several times and went back in for a refund. They always made up the excuse that the register was broken. After noticing a patter however we brought this to the attention of Anne. Letting her know that her son was double charging people for items and probably pocketing the extra. Even though Anne was pretty entitled, even she didn't go so far as to do something so obviously illegal, and we liked her little store and didn't want anything to happen to it. However, instead of thanking us for bringing this to her attention she told us that we were imagining things and in a very nice way told us to screw off. So we very kindly complied with her request. We also shared the information with some of our friends in the neighborhood. It had taken years to actually get to the point where some of them would even look at us let alone talk to us, thanks to Anne. But we had finally made some friends. Bringing Christmas treats to your neighbors every year is a good way to brighten up someone's day. But anyways they thanked us, even though they let us know that they didn't actually believe it. However, the word did quickly spread through the neighborhood. Then very quickly came Mr. Peacekeeper. He pulled up in our driveway again. This time he was a lot friendlier, he mostly ignored the rumors about us knowing that most of them were fake. And we'd actually talked to him several times since then, not on any serious matters mostly on more friendly terms, he stopped by for a beer every now and then and just chatted about happenings in the neighborhood and asked us our opinion on a few things. He did this with everyone, speaking to most people at least once a year to stay up to date and make sure everything remained nice and calm. 
He didn't like the idea of police hanging around so he made up his mind to do their job better so they wouldn't have to. But everyone including us, really liked this arrangement. It meant you could let your kids walk down to the lake unaccompanied even through the bad parts of the neighborhood. That being said he absolutely did not like the rumors that we were spreading about our neighbors and especially their little shop. He explained that he had already talked to them and they felt it was just a misunderstanding due to register issues and had if we did not want a problem we would stop those rumors right then and there. We wanted to show him proof. But we knew that he probably wouldn't believe it if we did. He really liked Anne and would generally take her word over ours and since they blew it off as a register error there was probably nothing we could do to convince him. So we agreed and apologized for any issues, explaining that we just felt wronged and sincerely wanted to protect the few friends that we'd made in the neighborhood. He accepted that apology giving us one final warning and left without saying much. So we just listened and made up our minds to stop shopping there unless we absolutely had to. But everything changed after a couple more years. After we had pointed it out and the rumors spread around the neighborhood. Even though Mr. Peacekeeper himself went around and told every single person that they were false rumors started by us because of our property feud with N, I'll get to that a little later, people actually started paying more attention to their receipts after shopping there and started noticing the same patterns that we had. Over this time S probably pocketed until amounts of money and N definitely knew about it but chose to do nothing, and just try to silence people with rumors. However, the thing about small country stores like that. They are completely dependent on their regulars that live in the neighborhood that they are set up in. During the warmer months when people are vacationing and having fun they make a huge profit, but not enough to sustain themselves through the winter. And then it happened. Mr. Peacekeeper finally connected the dots. And boy was he angry. We could hear him all the way next door cursing out S to his face and end there with him. You can't even imagine how satisfying that was. But that was only the beginning. Not only did he go off on them but also went door to door that same day and let every single person in the neighborhood know exactly what they were doing, even taking a pile of receipts with him to show anyone that wanted proof. Now if there was anyone in the neighborhood who was trusted more than N it was Mr. Peacekeeper. Literally in the course of 24 hours he had completely ruined their business. Everyone in the neighborhood stopped coming. They still did pretty well over the summer months because of vacationers and winter birds that didn't know anything. But when winter hit and those crowds were gone they started hemorrhaging money. After two winters they were forced to close their store for the winter months. However, that also meant that they had to throw away more than 90% of their stock every fall and buy it all again fresh every spring. I guess that doing that wasn't very economical so they ended up permanently closing shop after three more years. That was when their reputation in the neighborhood started to tank. And thanks to that people started actually respecting us more and we were actually able to make some friends without having to put in a ton of extra effort. People stopped ignoring us and treating us like we were plagued. But that was just the beginning for N's downfall. Unfortunately to get into the climax of the story I need to do a little more background work. Sorry that this is starting to turn into a small book but this shouldn't take too long I don't think. So something about N is that she is extremely, and I mean extremely nosy. We can not even walk outside without her watching our every step through her window or going outside to walk her dog or pick up her lawn or pull weeds or whatever excuse she can come up with at the time. You can pretty much guarantee that if we are walking around our property she is outside as well. It's not like we have anything to hide, but we obviously aren't on the best terms with her and don't really like someone staring at everything we do. We have plans to set up a small pool and hot tub out back and really don't want to be watched while we're trying to relax in our bathing suits. So we started looking into a privacy fence. Wanting to be nice neighbors we kindly informed N that we would be putting up a fence, to which she adamantly rejected to which we informed her that we would be putting up a privacy fence. However, we still had to live with her so we offered to discuss with her the details of the fence, the color, shape, etc. We wanted to make sure that she didn't have to stare at something that she thought to be an eyesore all day every day, considering that staring toward our property seemed to be her favorite pastime. Honestly we still go out of our way to be the best neighbors that we can, even after all the crap she's put us through. But back to the story. So we want to make sure there is no disputes about where we put the fence, so we plan to put it a foot over our property across the entire property line. Just to avoid any disputes, BTW this is Sill before S got out of jail, we went at the courthouse and paid for a copy of the deed along with a map of our property lines. We were honestly shocked to find that about third of our property was being claimed by N, she had a small shed on it and even a garden. You see there is actual a line of trees that goes through our property. It's not a straight box property like you find in some states it's more of a half hexagon or a trapezoid like shape. Weird property lines are pretty common where I live. Anyways there is a line of trees that cuts through part of our property that according to the deed and property map is like a little triangle section, but the trees make it a square. N was claiming the other side of the trees as her own property. When we brought this up to her she completely freaked out again calling us liars and thieves and all kinds of other stuff. We didn't really care too much about that property because we had lived here for years thinking that it actually was hers. So to make things easier on everyone we offered to sell it to her, or to even trade for a portion of her property. 
There was a portion of her property that connected with ours that was extremely inconvenient to take care of and extending it out a little would really make it easier to deal with, not to mention it would give us more room to do stuff that we wanted to do. She flatly refused saying that she would never pay for something that already belonged to her and she wouldn't even think about giving us her property for nothing especially after we already stole this property from her. Since then there has been a huge ongoing property dispute between us. Now something about the place I live. As I mentioned previously it's a very rural area with many strange property lines. And property lines are very often not cut and dry. Many deeds are hundreds of years old and instead of saying X feet in Y direction, they use temporary landmarks like large oak tree to large rock next to stream. Many of these landmarks could be describing multiple things, or could even have disappeared over a hundred years ago. So to say that there are a lot of property disputed in our area would probably be an understatement. That along with the fact that at times a very small portion of property can go for a lot of money in some situations has led our state to create a lot of very strict laws and regulations governing property disputes, surveyors, etc. As a side note, just a few years ago a landowner won a property dispute against a very large corporation over just 0.1 acres of land that coasted the cooperation and earned the man over a million dollars. Back on topic. All of that being said our property lines were pretty cut and dry since she created them herself fairly recently. However, that does not change the fact that laws regarding it are very strict. Particularly when it comes to surveyors. So a surveyor might be easily bribed by a large corporation facing the loss of millions of dollars for a tiny piece of land like in the example above. But that's not fair to the proper landowner. So how do you balance for that? Will you make it so the surveyor has everything to lose from lying, and so does the person who bribed or blackmailed them? The laws in our state determine that if a surveyor, even by honest mistake gives a bad survey by even a few feet not only can they be given a hefty fine, but they will also lose their license and never be allowed to survey again in the state. On top of that they must notify and refund all of their clients for up to 10 years before the incident occurred. The clients then have the option to request an additional survey by a non-affiliated surveyor at the expense of the original surveyor. That's every customer, up to 10 years prior to the incident, and every one since then as well. If they were not found to be accepting a bribe or blackmail then the previous clients can also sue them for any damages that were caused by any changes to the property line due to their bad survey as well as charging them appropriate rent for any property that the surveyor may have left out during that time. If they surveyor was found to be accepting a bribe or blackmail then all damages and additional fees goes toward the one who bribed or blackmailed them accordingly. This along with the loss of time and money from being in courts and the general hassle caused to them makes it so that surveyors in my area will actively avoid anything that even resembles a property dispute. So when a dispute occurred you can imagine that it was not as easy as making a phone call and getting a surveyor down here. It was also an unexpected expense as well. Unfortunately before we could find someone and found someone and I guess she bribed them or something because they gave the property line exactly how and described it. Well except for one little part that she didn't like, I guess she didn't mention that to them. Our property apparently stretches to about a foot from her house. Oh that was fun to play around with. But that was nothing near the property that she is literally trying to steal from us. Now whenever we are able to find a surveyor she always seems to nonchalantly introduce herself to them and mention that she already had her portion of the property surveyed, and throw in a few subtle hints that there might be a property dispute involved. This instantly scares off anyone who might be interested in surveying our property. After explainable what that could mean for them I'm sure you understand why. Oh did I forget to mention that the land markers from the bank surveyor when we bought the property conveniently disappeared before we actually moved in? No? Well they did somehow, I wonder how that happened. Guess we'll never know. Well anyways. At this point it would probably cost us as much as that piece of land is worth, or maybe even more to actually hire a surveyor if we can even find someone willing to do it. Which everyone we've found so far has given us absolutely ridiculous quotes, for obvious reasons, I mean they are basically putting their entire lives on the line here. But we are currently saving up to try to hire someone. And that brings us to just a few months ago, the climax of this story. Sorry for the long backstory but let's get to the main event now that we are fully caught up on the situation at hand. So a few months ago there was a very bad storm which ended up knocking down a tree on the disputed property. This tree was actually right next to the road so when it fell it destroyed part of our other neighbor's property, the one that lives across the street from us. That's not all, it also totaled someone's brand new sports car while they were driving down the street. Thankfully no one was hurt during all of this but the cleanup did take several days. Just enough time for us to receive a bill in the mail for over 200k, literally more than our house and property was worth after we fixed it up. K malicious compliance. So just a little more backstory for anyone who might not know. Most property or home insurance will not cover damages to other people's property, that's typically on you. And even if someone is in public property, like a road, if your property damages theirs and you could have reasonably prevented it, for example, cutting down a tree next to the road before it fell in a bad storm, then you are 100% responsible for the damages caused by it. Well ATL East that's how it works where I live. So when we got the bill in the mail from unknown rich person's insurance company for their totaled sports car we called them up and very kindly let them know that the tree that fell was not on their property. 
They asked us a few questions and said that they would investigate the matter and get back to us. About a week later we received another letter from the insurance company with a copy of the deed, and the property line print out with the tree in question circled in red showing that it was very clearly on our property. They were demanding full payment within 30 days of their first notice or they would be taking us to court. That was about two weeks give or take at this point. We called them again and explained once more that it was not on our property. At first the agent argued with us a little explaining in much nicer words than I'm going to use, that someone would have to be brain dead to believe that the tree in question was not on our property, and that it doesn't matter how off the property line on the printout might be, it would be completely impossible that anyone would ever be stupid enough to believe it was that far off. We simply gave them the number to the surveyor that N hired. They sighed saying they would contact the surveyor and investigate the matter further, but reiterated that we had about two weeks to get the payment ready if what we were saying could not be confirmed. Well we never heard anything back from them again. Remember the consequences I mentioned for giving false survey results? Even if the surveyor admitted to accepting a bribe, there was no way that they paid him enough to make up for all of his possible losses. He would probably have to leave the country at this point. So there was no way that he was going to give the insurance company anything different from what he gave us or N. We called the insurance company later to see what we could find out about the issue. The agent seemed pretty happy reading through the notes, they couldn't tell us too much due to confidentiality reasons. But they could tell us that N obviously disputed the claim, just like we did, saying the property did not belong to her. And that the surveyor confirmed the results with them. And that considering that we were not arguing with the survey results and that the surveyor was hired by N themselves there was no reason whatsoever for the insurance company to believe that the results were false. As long as we aren't disputing the results then the full responsibility for all damages caused by the fallen tree should be on N. They couldn't say anything more than that though, we were satisfied with that much. It was about what we expected. The aftermath. So as you can probably tell from my backstory and didn't have a huge problem paying the money to the insurance company, though they obviously were not happy about it. We don't know how much money they have or had saved up but it seems like it was enough to pay it off without having to sell any more of their land. Since then we've mostly stayed quiet about the property dispute but we are still considering saving up to hire a surveyor to get out land back. At this point it's more about the principle of the matter than it is about the actual land. As far as Anne goes though, we can tell whenever she looks at us now that she is definitely not pleased with us. She does not seem like that fact that we let her have our land for some reason, it's free land, how can you complain about that? LOL. At this point she could try to spread rumors about us but it would probably backfire as we've made friends with a very good portion of our neighborhood and nobody trusts N any longer since they found out that S was literally stealing from everyone in the neighborhood under their noses and they knew about it and did nothing to stop it. N is basically stuck between a rock and a hard place at this point and we're just sitting back and watching the fires they started burn them to the ground. Can't wait to see what happens next. Oh this is just a little extra for anyone who wants some extra fun. While we were contemplating a privacy fence we decided to put up an invisible dog fence for our dogs. For anyone that doesn't know what that is it's a small electrical wire that you bury under the ground. Then you attach a special collar to the dog's neck hat if they get too close it will let out a beep that the dogs really do not like. If they keep going it will apply a very mild shock to the dogs. We don't believe in shock collars so we had to be convinced first and one of us actually held it and waked across the line it was something that you could feel but didn't really hurt just left you a little tingly. Anyways you're actually supposed to condition the dogs to the beat before you just let them loose with it, so ideally they would never even feel the shock in the first place they would just hear the beep and turn around. We tried to do this so that we could let our dogs roam around our yard and not be cooped up in the house all day. But at the time we could not afford an actual privacy fence yet. We had it well into our property, party because it wasn't that long, and also partly because we wanted to avoid our dogs getting anywhere close to N's property. And must have thought we were marking where we wanted to put our privacy fence or something because she accidentally ran over it with her lawn mower, even though it was more than 5 feet past what she claimed to the be property line. We all learned that day that electrical lawn mowers do not play very well with electrified wires. Her mower was completely trashed. Every electrical component was ruined, she had to buy a whole new mower. Just because she wanted to be petty and run over our markers. The best part about it is that since it was so far over the property like she had no way of trying to blame it on us. She did obviously try to spread her rumors, but they didn't go very far. It would have been so stupid to blame us that she didn't even try, she never even asked us to buy her a new mower or anything. I guess she knew how we'd respond if she did lol. Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed the story. I have another one coming up about a different situation, how my mother's malicious compliance cost her company over a hundred million dollars and got her entire department completely and permanently shut down. But it's late and I'm going to bed, I'll tell that story tomorrow or something, be looking out for it.